almost every guided meditation that I have tried has been like, start by ridding your mind of any thoughts. And I'm like, now I'm just thinking about not thinking. Looking at May's brain on the top is before. Below is after more than a month of meditation practice. Positive healthy changes, kinda hard. Hi, I'm May, and I'm gonna be meditating every day for at least 25 minutes for the next six weeks. I've done some guided meditations through different apps or therapies that I've been in, but it's never been something that I've actually been able to stick with. I've heard that there's so many benefits, like reducing anxiety and depression, better sleep, better concentration. I feel like it could be really helpful for me because I definitely need all those things. My sleep schedule right now is literally tragic. On average, I'm probably getting like two to four hours of sleep and most of the time it's interrupted. I'm on my third prescribed medication to try and get me to sleep and nothing has really worked. So there have been some studies done that show that meditation can actually change your brain if done consistently. So I'm actually gonna get an MRI taken of my brain before and after the six week challenge. The MRI services we received in this video were free of cost. And then I'm gonna sit down with a neurologist who will go over my scans with me and tell me if any changes have occurred. It is officially day one of my six week meditative journey. So to start myself off, I'm kind of just gonna try and ease into it. So I'm just gonna use a guided meditation app that I've used a lot of times because I know that it makes it way easier. Today, I'm gonna be doing a managing stress and anxiety guided meditation. I think it'll be helpful. I'm a little bit nervous, but 25 minutes every day, we gotta do it. Day one is done. I knew I was getting a little distracted. That's something I really wanna work on tomorrow and just moving forward is the fidgeting. Surprisingly, the 25 minutes didn't feel unbearable at all. I think after six weeks of doing this every single day, there's no way that that won't get easier. Okay, so it is the last day of my first week and to kind of celebrate that, I'm trying something new and I'm going to do my first non-guided meditation. Today I'm gonna to be trying this thing called sound meditation. Basically the way that it works is I just kind of sit somewhere and focus on all of the sounds around me and kind of isolating them and just centering myself through those sounds. So instead of just staying in my apartment and trying to do it here, I'm gonna drive down to the beach and like find a semi-secluded area if I can. Maybe sit on some rocks and have like the wind, the wave sounds. Okay, not to be dramatic, but I literally almost cried. <laughs> I have a lot of emotions tied to like sitting at this spot. Whenever I have a really hard time, um, this is kind of just my spot to like debrief. Focusing so much on all of the sounds that kind of come with me being at this spot just really brought up so much. Wow, that was amazing. I am on my way to meet with a meditation expert and I am really hoping that they'll be able to answer some of my questions and maybe teach me about some different types of meditation because I'm feeling a little limited with the knowledge that I have. I'm trying, but we could use some help. What is your baseline understanding of meditation? I've used Headspace, but mostly for really short meditations. It takes about anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes for the mind to quiet down completely. For a lot of people, it's hard. You spiral into these thoughts when you're trying to be thought less. I definitely find myself thinking a lot about how I shouldn't be thinking. Out of the ones that you tried so far, is there one that resonates or that your body reacts to a little bit differently? I tried yesterday sound meditation. That was the closest that I have felt to this like quiet. When you did the sound one, you set an intention also about your surroundings before it. Yeah. So you really cultivated the space for it to happen. Any type of meditation, I really encourage folks to try to make that moment extraordinary. For days that I can't be as intentional, how can I make that feel more extraordinary? I would start setting up a space. Whatever space feels organically, intuitively special to you. Light up some incense, light up a candle, maybe put some essential oil. By having that, you're already tapping into that 
mental space per se. What it does is it creates an anchor. Maybe I'll go like buy a candle or something that I'm only gonna light exactly. when I'm meditating. What is it that you want out of the meditations to do? Improving my sleep. Breathing meditations will definitely help in facilitating your sleep. Another massive goal though, I think would be working on anxiety. Do you know why you get anxious? Well, I have really bad social anxiety and then also a lot of my anxiety stems from perfectionism. Oh, what would help for that? Definitely loving kindness. Think of loved ones. If you have a pet, think of that love you have for that pet or someone, because then that love will turn to you. Yeah. You have the power within yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Seriously, this is so helpful. I just finished my meditation for today. The advice to have a specific candle every single time I'm meditating change the game. I'm not kidding when I say, when I smell this, immediately I feel more calm. Okay, hi. I look and sound a little crusty. Um, that's because I just woke up. I actually had the worst night's sleep and I woke up feeling a lot of anger. I don't remember the dream, but I'm pretty sure I had a nightmare about this very specific person. This would be a really good time to try and do the loving kindness meditation. I'm gonna do it for three different people. So I'm gonna do it for one, somebody that I love because that's gonna be really easy. Two, somebody that I know, but I'm not really close with, like an acquaintance. And then three, somebody that I have negative feelings towards, which is going to be a person that is in my head right now, really consuming me. And the goal here is to extend these feelings of loving kindness and compassion and almost understanding, I think as well. I like the fact that it has a lot of direction, like it's, not passive at all. It's a very active meditation, so we're gonna try it. Ready, set, go. Okay, I'm done. I feel so much more ready for my day and a lot less mad. This was really, really good. I'm gonna keep this one in the rotation for sure. One thing that I am very quickly realizing is going to be a really annoying problem this entire six weeks is the way that I need to plan my days around the fact that I need to meditate. Like we are trying to make plans for the day and something that literally just came out of my mouth was, yeah, but I have to meditate. So like, how can we fit that in the day? It's annoying, but we're working with it because it's part of the challenge. Ugh, I hate to say this, but we had our first big setback. Basically, just to rip the bandaid off, I missed two, pretty much three days of meditation, which is a lot. Um, and I'm really, really upset about it. I suffer with really bad migraines. I have my entire life. And I had a really intense episode that lasted almost three days. And it was to the point that I couldn't move. Like I was laying in bed all day. My girlfriend was literally like hand feeding me soup. I was feeling kind of better yesterday. It was the first day that I was able to like really get out of bed and half be a person. So I tried to meditate, which is why I said two and a half days because I did like 10-ish minutes yesterday, but I'm gonna get back into it today, go full throttle. I'm gonna go back in my little corner and light my candle. I'm actually really excited. Shockingly, I've been missing it. Okay, my motivation to meditate today Zero. Literally none. I'm about to go to dinner and I need to do it before then because I'm just like gonna be with India the rest of the night and I don't really want to do it. I'm forcing myself to go and be like really intentional about this one because I know it's gonna be harder for me to keep my focus. My apartment has this rooftop thing. I'm gonna go sit on there and do the meditation there and I'm gonna do a sound meditation while I'm watching the sunset. I ended up doing like 10, 15 minutes of sound meditation. And then I got too distracted to keep doing it. So I just automatically switched to love and kindness meditation. And it worked super well because I was able to focus my energy very much on like the mantras or whatever that I was saying. And I didn't even have to think about it to do that. It just kind of happens to me. Honestly, I feel like I've grown a lot, even just from that one thing, like that's awesome. Something that I'm noticing is that I think I might have a little bit more mental energy because it's one of those days where every little thing is just going so incredibly wrong. And I just went to pick up my lunch that I ordered online and somebody 
picked up my order and since I already had such a stressful day, I know usually I would probably be crying. And today I got into my car after that happened, just ordered another meal inside and I just sat here for a sec, took some deep breaths and then I was like, did I just soothe myself with breathing? Like what? Who is that? Like it's me, I guess now, okay. It's currently 1 a.m. and I actually just realized that I did not meditate today. So this is actually really good timing to not be able to sleep because I'm going to try the sleep meditation that we talked about with the expert. I have not slept before like 5 a.m. in probably a week and that needs to change. So I am pretty desperate. I've kind of been putting this one off because I just don't want to be disappointed, honestly. We're ripping the band-aid off. If I don't check back, it means I fell asleep. As you can see, I'm awake, so it didn't work. <laughs> I do feel more calm though. I have to admit my mind is a lot more clear. I struggle a lot with erasing thoughts, especially at night. With that being said, I'm gonna turn this light off so that hopefully I don't mess with what just happened and I can just maybe fall asleep faster. I slept over at India's last night and now we just had breakfast and I'm on my way home and I just noticed this little park on my way home. It's one of those days where I feel like I can't get into the headspace of like actually working because I just feel like I want to be with my girlfriend right now. But I need to be productive and I need to go home and do my work. If I give myself this 25 minutes to sit here at this really cute park and just relax and do my meditation for the day here, I think I'm actually gonna be able to be more productive once I get home. I think this is actually a huge sign of growth. Putting a pause on my work to do something for myself is something that I just normally would have never thought to do. When I tell you I feel like I've never been more relaxed in my life, what just happened to me? It is objectively inconvenient to go around to do these meditations somewhere besides my apartment, but holy shit, it makes such a difference. I really do feel so much more into it and so much more affected by the meditations when I'm doing them in a space like this. Wow. My hair looks absolutely insane, <laughs> but I was just so excited to report I fell asleep while doing the meditation yesterday. Killed it. If I was guessing, I would say I probably did it for like 15 minutes before I fell asleep. So technically I didn't meet the 25 minute mark, but the falling asleep while doing it means a lot more to me than that. So it's a win. All right, I don't know what was going on um, with my upstairs neighbors, but it sounded like they were literally bowling as I was trying to meditate, but I wasn't distracted by it. Like I would hear the noise, I would kind of, acknowledge it in my brain for one second and then flip right back. I feel really proud of myself. Knowing that the challenge is coming to an end and I'm feeling like this is just making me so happy. Okay, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but we did it. It is the final day of meditating every day for six weeks. I am in shock that I I have made it this far and I am so proud of myself. And to celebrate my final day, I am going to do a little throwback to my first really successful meditation, which was the one in Malibu. I just feel like it's the perfect way to end the challenge. It just feels right. I'm Victoria and this is Dr. Jordan. I am the Director of Business Development and Marketing for the Regenesis Project, which is a research organization that is devoted to new technologies for brain health and regeneration. There were a lot of people suffering who weren't seeing results from traditional therapies. So he has created his own clinical research organization. What is the difference between functional imaging, like what we did, and just like traditional MRIs, traditional imaging? In conventional imaging, the idea is to mostly look at the shape and size of the brain. It's pretty good for looking for areas of scarring or possibly, in a bad case, the growth of a tumor. It basically shows you structure, but it doesn't show you how things are working. When you do a functional image, you're actually looking at the thought process. We're so excited to share what we found. Here we are looking at pictures of May's brain on the top. 
is before. Below is after more than a month of meditation practice and changes in her mood state. She became much less anxious. We know that the anxiety is related to a particular part of the brain called the amygdala. This is a part of the brain that has to do with the fight or flight mechanism. And what happens when people become anxious is that the whole brain gets caught up. And you can see her whole frontal lobe, for example, is completely engaged in this anxiety response. And then she had this more than one month of meditation practice, and look what happened. All that activity in the frontal lobe calmed down, much less activation. We could compare May with other people and see how much connectivity there is of the amygdala with the rest of the brain. You can see all these reds and yellows here, and that's actually a statistical worsening of the anxiety response. So he has much more activation compared to expectation. And then after, his meditation practice for a month. Look at this. She's, she has very little signal. So the whole brain is kind of quieted down compared to expected normal activity. That's so cool. Then, interestingly, the insula over here is a little activated. That's a part of the brain that has to do with suffering. People suffer when they're too anxious. They have repetitive thoughts. But in this case, she coped with the anxiety by this meditation practice, much less activation than before. What we saw with May is the results of a new meditation practice that changed her life in some very positive ways. I definitely like have noticed certain things, but seeing like actual factual, like you inarguable scans is so cool because it, it does make me feel like, okay, it wasn't just like a placebo. Like that's legitimate like research now. That's so cool. I do actually genuinely feel different. And I'm pretty surprised. The meditation wasn't a cure-all for my anxiety and sleep issues, but I did find it to be a helpful tool. It's not perfect, but the fact that I did see a little bit of change does motivate me to keep doing it and then allows me to believe that there is a chance that it could continue to help more. Now I see meditation as something that I will use in the future on a semi-regular basis. I feel like it was worth it.